Hi there, Annie from Mountain Crest Gardens here, and I am with Tom Jesh of Waterwise Botanicals. He's an amazing plantsman, hybridized his first plant when he was very young, so we're gonna hear a bit of the story behind that. And he's where all of our Waterwise Apuntia, the blooming paddle cactus, comes from. So I can't wait to hear this story. Oh, uh, I got a story for you. Okay. So I started out as a child. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I grew up in uh, the mountains between Reno and Lake Tahoe. Uh-huh. Winters there get down to, well, the coldest ever that I remember was 44 degrees below zero. No. Two or three nights in a row. <gasps> a regular winter though, nice tens and twenties below. Okay. <gasps> There's a native cactus that grows in the foothills around the Reno Valley. Well, as I was growing up as a child, I was interested in plants. And hiking through the sagebrush, you would come across a little cactus growing. Well, I started actually growing a cactus garden at the age of about somewhere between six and eight years old. Wow. So I had some winter hardy yuccas that would grow there, and I found this cactus. Uh And so I planted the cactus in and among that, and that was called the porcupine cactus, which is this one right here. The porcupine cactus has these bristly long white spines and yellow flowers. Yellow flowers in the spring. Well, I was excited about that. And so I grew more, and I grew more, and at about a nice teenage age of between 11 and 12 years old, preteen age, I met a gentleman who had a cactus garden. And he had some choyas that were winter hardy. And so now I was able to add to my collection. Okay. And I was reading cactus books and I just had yellow flowers, yellow flowers, wherever I found it, yellow flowers. In a cactus book one day, I found a picture of what looked like the same variety of cactus. This is called the porcupine cactus or Apuntia arenaceae, and I saw a picture of it with a red flower. Oh my gosh. Well, you know how boys are in the teenage years. You know, I wanted a pinup of it. (laughs) The red flower, the unattainable. Uh And I looked and I searched, and everywhere I found the Apuntia uh, arenaceae, the porcupine cactus, the flowers were yellow. 400 miles away but around in the foothills of Las Vegas, yellow flowers. Around Tonopah, Nevada, 200 miles away, yellow flowers. (laughs) Everywhere I went, yellow flowers. Well, I had this fantasy that had to be fulfilled. So by the time I was 17 years old, my cousin and I were growing cactus and succulents when they were not popular and selling them at the swap meet out of his backyard in Santa Ana. I had a little beaver tail cactus, a a little miniature dwarf beaver tail cactus. Now I knew, yeah, bacillaris. Bacillaris. I knew the bacillaris had those beautiful cherry red flowers. Yeah. So strangely enough, it flowered at the same time as my Santa Rita cactus. Oh. So I I did the little thing, I got the pollen from the one Uh and I put it on the other and lo and behold, I got one seed that germinated (gasps) And that was this cactus right here. And I finally got not quite the red flower, but a salmon flower, (laughs) which is progress, right? Yeah, you're on your way. And so because I had crossed it with a little baby miniature bacillus species, along with a Santa Rita cactus, I named it Baby Rita. Oh, okay. That was, let's see, I'm 160 now, so (laughs) I don't want to do the math, but I just want to tell you it's some decades ago, Uh but since then I have sold thousands and thousands and thousands of the Baby Rita cactus. It's very cute. But it wasn't the red flower that I saw on the pinup in the Plowboy magazine that I fantasized all of my formative years on. Uh And one day I was in a very special undisclosed location in the foothills of a very cold climate, somewhere where there's a combination of juniper trees and pinyon pines and rocky crags and cactus. And it was in May and there were all different kinds of apuntias or prickly pear cactus with every imaginable kind of flower on them because they were hybridizing like bunnies. Oh my. You could hike a half a mile and find 20 different new variations, hybrids, and versions. Okay. And I came across the red flowered porcupine cactus. Oh my gosh, Nirvana. (laughs) I found it. Uh My fantasy was fulfilled. (laughs) And I went crazy. I started hiking secret places like this 
and finding these incredible amounts of varieties of cactus that were hybridizing, coming up with every color of flower imaginable. Wow. And many different forms too, some almost thornless, others with massive amounts of thorns, some with larger paddles, some with little miniature paddles. And so I started collecting little pads here and there and just get a start of a plant and then growing it and trialing it to the point where I was working with about 80 different varieties of cactus. Now, 80 of those, out of those 80 different varieties of cactus, some wouldn't form a bud in our warmer climate. Some would only form one or two flower buds in our climate. Others had a terrible problem with rot and would rot away. And so slowly through the process of selection, we have developed a line of very special prickly pear cactus, or sometimes people call them paddle cactus. Um, the genus name is Opuntias, and no, I'm not angry at you, I'm not going to Opuntia. And we have now every color imaginable. Wow. We have a variety that is a color changer. It blooms yellow the first day, and then turns pink the next day, oh. and when it's covered with hundreds of flowers, it looks like a bubble gum machine exploded. Is that And that pina one's colada? called Pina Colada. Oh, I love Pina Colada. We have salmons, we have sunset colors, we have cherry reds, bright, brilliant reds, we have yellows with red throats, uh -huh. every color imaginable. And you guys are from Northern California, right? Yep. Fine. Pine trees growing around you, right? Yep. Sometimes gets down to Zero degrees. Zero degrees, Fahrenheit. right? Yeah. And they're growing mm -hmm. outdoors where you are. Thriving. They're so happy. Thriving. How crazy <laughs> is that, right? So these guys can be grown almost anywhere in the United States. They're not so fond of tropical Florida and Houston. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, you can do pretty darn well with them. And they are cold hardy. I mean, these things are in North Dakota, South Dakota, 20 below, no problem. I've seen them in Canada, too. In Canada, there's a native species very closely related to this. Uh -huh. In fact, there's a porcupine cactus that I found growing at 8,200 feet in the Sierra Nevadas no. next to the aspen trees and a trout stream flowing down. Wow. Problem was it had a yellow flower. <laughs> <laughs> no good, but no good. <laughs> amazing group of plants and so versatile. So you just find a sunny location, good drainage is kind of important, but they do like water in the summertime. The key is to let them dry out in between watering. So you don't ever want to water a wet or moist soil, but that drying out process during a hot summer could be every several days. Yeah. Give them nice juicy waterings and even a little bit of fertilizer because cactus and succulents have very shallow roots and they enjoy a little bit of fertilizer to boost them up. The following year, you'll get hundreds of flowers. Now, most of these plants grow to be maybe about as wide as you can reach. Uh -huh. Never hardly taller than about 12 to 14 inches. Uh -huh. And when they develop and get a year or two on them and more paddles, the flowers are so insane that it looks like the tulip fields of Holland Jeez. on thorns. Oh my goodness. <laughs> on a bed of nails. So let's rise up. <laughs> and take a look and just look at the panorama. Now these cactus go over the hill and we have thousands and thousands of every variety imaginable, every color variety, and even cactus paddles that themselves have color because many of them are purple in coloration or turn intensely purple in the winter time. Oh. That's something special on their own. And in fact, we have one that's just off to the, our edge here. I don't know if it's in view of the camera right now, but we'll show you a close-up called uh, Pinta Rita, and we love it because of its purple color. I like to call it the artist cactus oh, because yeah. artists are loving to paint the cactus paddles with those purple tones in them. Yeah. And some of our varieties, like Pina Colada, the color changer that we talked about, uh -huh. the fruits turn red in the summertime. So now you get flowers in the spring, you get this beautiful uh, mound of cactus plant, and then it's covered with red fruits that look like New Mexico chili pepper in yeah. the summertime. So, so interesting, very fast growing, very rewarding, and flowers so delicate, but so beautiful. Many of, most of the flowers are about three inches or more across, and they look like they're made of just, they're really the most delicate, beautiful flowers in the plant kingdom. There's nothing like a cactus flower. Yeah. It's like, you know, if the plant's got to be ugly, <laughs> God gave it some beauty. Yeah. Right? And how long do the blooms last? Uh, a day. Okay. Or two days. Usually two days on most of them. But the thing is, is they have so many flowers on them oh, yeah. that the show of flowers continues for usually about a month to a month and a half in the spring. Nice. 
However, we have one new variety that we're just introducing to the trade. Uh -huh. It's our own variety, and it's called Goldie Rita. Ooh. Goldie Rita has a yellow flower with a brilliant fiery red throat, and it tends to bloom spring, summer, and into fall. No How about way. that? Yeah. Oh, that's a long bloomer. That's a long that's bloomer. That's rivaling a sedum even. There. Right? Yeah. So that's exciting stuff. So all of you cactophiles who just yearn for something prickly because you live in Oregon or Washington, if you have that sunny spot, well drained, even there, you can grow these babies because actually they come from a climate that's more mountainous. They actually come from a climate that's a little on the cooler side. So they can endure coastal all up and down California. They can endure uh, Oregon and Washington in a sunny spot where maybe you keep the excessive rains off of them yeah. and then any other cold state in the country. I always like them to see them on mound it, mounds or on slopes Me too, yeah. so that they can really drain and dry out. I even saw photos of a nursery uh, garden somewhere in Oregon um, where they had combined sedums and sempervivums and some of the cold hardy Apuncha cactus all Neat. mixed together oh, in nice. rocky crags wow. and it worked. Isn't oh, that something? fantastic. And uh, I can't imagine you have problems with pests or deer when they're... Uh... <coughs> uh, deer not so much but uh, most of the Apunchias uh, can sometimes get, um, and not usually in colder climates, uh -huh. but in coastal California climates, sometimes scale oh, the and mealy bug. Scale. And also yeah. the cochineal scale, which is prolific in desert climates. Right. And so a little bit of soapy water and a hard blasting usually takes care of that. Neat. Yeah. So, wow. Um, and the cochineal scale, by the way, yeah. is what the Indians used to make red dye for doing baskets and blankets with. Yeah. It's an amazing dye. The cochineal scale makes big puffy white masses of insects on your prickly pears if you live in Phoenix and maybe Palm Springs. It's unsightly, it's easily blasted off, but there's something interesting about it, right? Absolutely, it's such a, a powerful dye. <coughs> exactly. A natural dye, very yeah. cool. Wow. Well, so I guess you could say then that a punchy cactus the cochineal scale knows that they're to die for. Ah, but um. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing these wonderful plants with us and the stories behind their selection and how they came to be for this whole Rita line. That's right. It really adds a lot of depth and meaning to them for me. So thank you so much, you Tom. Bet. And we have about seven varieties in the Rita line, but believe me, there's many more varieties in addition to that that include so many other colors and so many other forms as well. Wow. But the Rita line is extremely distinctive to us. Nice. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. And if you want to find your own Apuntia blooming cactus, you can head over to Mountain Crest Gardens. We'll leave links in the description. Thanks and happy succulenting.